What's going on guys, this is Purgatory and welcome to a brand new video and today's video is kind of special because I hit 200 hours in Splatoon 3 and I really wanted to get my review out there but I wanted it to be to where it shows that I've had put a lot of time into this game. Where I'm at right now in this game at 200 hours, I reached level 30 in multiplayer and S plus rank pretty awesome to say that but i hit s plus rank in multiplayer i hit executive vp i even touched the 99 mark i think i haven't gone over 100 100 yet but i've hit executive vp 99 i've 100 the hero mode and that is that is even surveying the areas collecting all the items doing every level and i even completed the bonus level if you want to see me complete that i actually have a video on it so go ahead and check that out but overall, and I think I'm like level 20 in Table Turf. I still I haven't played that as much as I've played the rest of the game, but Table Turf is still still good fun. I have I'm pretty sure I probably have all the shirts, I have all the shoes, and I have all the hats that they have to offer right now. My locker is the tallest it can be. I got some cool stickers. I hit up a lot of freshness, and I believe I have right now five Sheldon license for future guns that release. I think I'm at a pretty pretty good point to give you my opinion on this game and there have been some patches too so I also wanted to wait for some patches to come out but Splatoon 3 I want to say this outright right now and let me explain after Splatoon 3 is the best shooter I feel that we've gotten this kind of like generation even if that even if it, like most people don't think that's true it is definitely the best Splatoon game we have received from Nintendo the it, the fun all of it speaks for itself okay so we're gonna go out onto the positives first the story mode was a major twist that I didn't expect and, and I really loved it it didn't feel like the same story that Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2 had and it was very similar to the Octo expansion kind of vibe where you just do section the levels with these cool little courses and it isn't usually just a world a level you just run through get to the end these are like do these cool things and then get to the end they did that octo expansion approach and then the the really cool thing was they added like the music discs they added stuff you can get for multiplayer they added that there was a bunch of stuff in there that you could get for the table turf mode there was just a lot of rewards that they gave you for playing the single player this is probably the coolest one too because it isn't like a boring world that you just go ink stuff on that was my biggest flaw with splatoon 1 and splatoon 2's story modes is this place was just it looks like a random little place just with a bunch of blocks all around it this but splatoon 3's story mode is probably the biggest we've gotten because you can explore these places you can they actually make it to where matters to explore this because that's where all the stuff that you get is at it's not in any of the levels they just let you enjoy the levels with some hidden you know power eggs if you find them but all the collectibles the the expo exploration map and that's probably the coolest part for me the pull perk system was interesting the upgrade tree was interesting it just felt like it was just an added added on thing i think it's a lot cooler than what we had in the first two games all you could do was upgrade the guns you could upgrade your other equipment but this one had like i feel like if it, it felt more fleshed out it was still a little weird but it, it felt good overall the ending of this story is very similar again to octo expansion it'll be like this huge level you go through and then you get to the boss fight and that's cool enough and so i i like that a lot so story mode definitely a plus i think it's probably the best story mode we've ever gotten i'm gonna save multiplayer for last and do quickly do table turf table turf fun little game mode at first it was a little hard for me because i didn't i don't really play these kinds of games and it's like a little tetrisy kind of thing to where you just have to own the most turf it's kind of like turf war in multiplayer to where you just own it get a bunch of stuff you get a bunch of these card packs so it's like a little side game in there that is very fleshed out because you'll get card packs from things that you do and so you can collect all the cards it's kind of like doing the whole pokemon thing you get, you're like oh i got this cool card so the whole mode in general i think it's bots only right now but i feel like they'll probably add multiplayer later but the you play against the cpu that are really hard and it's a lot of fun so table turf fantastic next up is salmon run okay so i have a lot to say about salmon run i'm gonna go with the positives first the maps are really good except 
for spawning grounds. That's a map from Splatoon 2. That's probably one of the worst, in my opinion, one of the worst maps that they could bring back from Splatoon 2. And so, you know, they brought it back, but that's whatever. But the Gone Fishing map and the Sockeye Station map, I think they're both called. Both of those maps are fantastic. Gone Fishing, I think, is a little less eh, is a little more eh than Sockeye is. But they're actually really good maps. The rotations that we've experienced so far are have been pretty decent pretty much there's only like one rotation that was on i think spawning grounds that was my least favorite but for the majority of the time the rotations have been great the grizzco weapons that we've seen so far which is like the grizzco blaster i believe and then the grizzco tri shooter uh, the the bow and that thing is insane it has like 10 barrels on it and you just yeah it with those little grizzco things those rotations are so much fun so and with the grizzco things they make it look like somebody modded the game and but no it's just some nintendo made that they'll just rotate in every once in a while but overall that's that's all fine and dandy where my problem is with this is the boss fights so the boss fights it seems that over time it's become easier to beat especially at the rank that i'm at and that and that is executive i beat like two bosses in the past two days than i've beaten any bosses in the past month i think i only have four or five boss kills out of the 200 plus like shifts quote unquote, like shifts I've played. That whole thing is a pain in the ass, but you still get rewarded for it. And that's where the other flaw is, is the rewards. Okay, well, first we'll get the capsules out of the way. The capsules, they're fine. They're great. You get a cool piece of clothing with it, but also some cap capsules that'll have something else in there, like chunks, coins. That's all great, fine and dandy. I don't care about that because you actually get those pretty fast. My, <laughs> my problem with the progression and this with the rewards is the shells. And and man, it's kind of unbearable and sometimes this makes me want to like I just stop at the capsule like the last capsule that I need to get kind of like the 1200 1400 mark is usually where I'm stopping because when I get a Kohozuna and you know I beat it or I'm not beat it I sometimes will have a chance to not get the silver scale and the silver scale is the only thing I care about and sometimes I'll get a gold scale I'm like that's cool but I don't want that I want the silver scale because I'm trying to get the cool outfits for my squids or my octoling i guess and so that part is insanely frustrating so the, i they need to balance that out to where it feels more rewarding and it actually feels really cool for kohazuna to come out because right now after like the first two or three times you see a kohazuna it gets really old and then that's really all there is it's and it, it sometimes it isn't fun because they'll spam enemies on you that's my other thing is some of the modes in this oh some of them are, in my, in my opinion, somehow worse than they were in Splatoon 2. Mo we got mostly similar ones except for Tornado and Mudmouth. But we have Mothership back, we have the Glowflies back, and somehow the Glowflies in Splatoon 3 are much harder than the Spl Glowflies in Splatoon 2. The Splatoon 2 ones were not even that hard. They could be, but they weren't. In Splatoon 3... Oh my god, the glowflies in this are, they feel like they're so tanky, the goldie that you try to kill, it just, it takes so many shots, it's crazy. Sometimes the difficulty can be a bit much, especially when you, when you're not playing with a full like team that you know, of people you know, you're playing with randoms. So there's a likely chance, like a 50-50 chance you get a trash team. The higher in the ranks you go, the better teammates you'll find, but it's usually like sometimes you still get that one rock in the pile of diamonds like it's pretty bad anyways that's my that's my thing for Sp salmon run salmon run i think is a ton of fun it can be pretty freaking sweaty but you know it's whatever it, it, i i think the challenge is there it should be tuned down a little bit and the, the rewards the scales should be tuned up in terms of how often you get them that or get kohozuna to spawn more often make kohozuna just a little bit easier stop spamming enemies please balance glow flies that's my that's the only one that i have the major problem with just please balance gold flies gold flies i've barely only won two rounds of all the times i've gotten glow flies so anyways moving on from there salmon run is amazing i i still think it's pretty damn good um it's a lot better than splatoon 2s because we actually have some good maps except for spawning ground sorry <laughs> But uh, overall, Salmon Run, a ton of fun. Highly recommend that mode, especially if you're getting tired of multiplayer. So next up, we're going to be going into multiplayer. Save the best for last, I guess. This is the one that most people care about. And I get it, but I love Salmon Run. I love me some campaign. I love me, you know, whatever else they do with the game. Multiplayer is where it's at. And I have to say, this is the best multiplayer we have had 
But at the same time, I hate to say it like this, it's one of the sweatiest multiplayers we've had. Except for playing on Turf 4. When you play on Turf 4, you get that variety. But when, you play in, when you're playing in ranked mode, even early rank, it has never felt this sweaty. And like the ranked mode, you know, it's ranked mode. So you should be having people that are more competitive. But it's like sometimes you'll have a mat, like the matchmaking is just terrible right now for ranked because you'll sometimes get a match where you're playing against an S plus 99 player or maybe S plus 80, 50. I'm an S plus zero. And I'm getting paired against people way up there. And sometimes, like when I was in A rank, trying to get to S, it was so hard to win some games because sometimes the game, I remember seeing this stat, the game put me in a game with somebody who was S plus, I think two, and I was A, I think I was just A rank. That's crazy. It's insanely sweaty, super competitive. Like sometimes it's ha it's hard to see, to have, to have a casual time, except for when you go to turf war. So turf war is kind of that saving grace to be like, okay, we can have a little bit of fun, but the flaw in that is that it's turf war. It's the only mode. I want to play the other mode but i have to sweat and that kind of becomes different each time because when you're playing opens that's you getting to people that are partied so i will say playing a series at times is solo queue only and so sometimes a series can be more fun i think opens are in a really rough spot because like the higher in the rank that you are the more likely you are to be matched against people that have teams and so the flaw in that is really to me is the fact that the matchmaking is so weird is like it'll pair, pair you against a party of like s plus 50s or just a party of people that are you know more coordinated talking on discord and then you probably have a random solo queuer guy with you too like that's the whole thing man it, it becomes kind of an issue but at the same time you can't when you whenever you go into opens you kind of have to expect it but that's where my flaw is i want like series is fun it's nice and you get a really hefty reward if you do really well but where my problem lies with that is the fact that you have to dedicate to it like you take some of your xp you put that in there and then you go play your series and you can pause them but i don't know if there's like a limit but it's just like that dedication to it because you don't know if you're gonna lose or gain points after every win so it's it's a little weird to me like series i it's just that whole like commitment problem with the series but the series are still still can be more fun somehow than opens when you're playing with friends opens is a great time i guess that's how they intended it to be i'm really glad that i made this review after the patch because the patch fixed one big thing that I was not completely but it did fix one big thing that I had and that was the lag like sometimes I would be shooting shots at somebody and it looks like they they would be hitting but for some reason they weren't and, you know it's just kind of the hit reg the hit reg fell off the connection fell off and with the patch notes they were they released recently where they reduced where they fixed that connection issue they called it like a data transfer thing forget it right out the top of my head it made the game feel a lot better the game that's the other thing about this with the game's insanely smooth feeling the multiplayer, even though it can be sweaty sometimes, the multiplayer can be incredibly satisfying. It's one of the most satisfying multiplayer shooters to play, but sometimes it's one of the most frustrating shooters to play. I can't say if it has skill-based matchmaking or not, or at least like strict skill-based matchmaking, but I can definitely see that there definitely is some, but at the same time, the matchmaking in this game is in a weird spot. So that's the other problem. It's, it's a tough situation with all that stuff, but let's go over to the weapon balance. Recently with the weapon balance it was a little rough and i still think it's in a it's in a eh spot but it was a little rough because of the slosher if you're not really if you're not somebody who follows splatoon in splatoon 3 the slosher the little like wave that they have with it whenever you shoot it it's like a little projectile along with a wave that, that is around it and that wave can hit you too but it does less damage anyways with that wave you can hit people through walls there is no wall penetration in this game at all because it's paint it doesn't go through walls unless it's like a really piercing like paint kind of like the the pressure wash like it's like pressure paint i guess but it was pretty bad because you could just hit people through walls and it was insane so that was a huge thing and also it's booyah bomb that it got paired with was crazy most of the swasher meta i would say is in a interesting spot because most of the swashers are insanely good um they have great kit and then up next is the splat wings and it feels like the shooters are just kind of in the gutter right now they're not bad they can still be effective like spider shot pro jet squelcher the dualies feel nice so like the the weapon balance isn't terrible but i do think it needs some adjustment so like brushes definitely could use something i don't know what they can do but sloshers definitely i think the rollers are in an okay spot anything with like tenta missiles 
is also an issue. Um, and that's really it for me. The I definitely want to see shooters br brought back to light a little bit more. But there are some good ones to where if you buff them, they might break it. So who knows? But anyways, the, the weapon balance, I would say, is in, a, is in a decent spot. It's not in the worst spot. Let's go on to the maps. So most of these maps are pretty great. Um, I'm a little disappointed with Mahi Mahi's redo, where they made the map somehow smaller. That's a bummer, but honestly, I don't mind it. I think it actually plays really good on some modes, especially Clan Blitz. I think Mahi Mahi might be one of my favorite maps on Clan Blitz. So that one's huge. So most majority of the maps are pretty good. I think my favorite map, probably Eel Tail Alley. I really like that map. I know some people don't, but I actually really like that map. Uh, Scorch Gorge is great, I think. It had to grow on me for a bit. Scorch Gorge feels good. The only bad map I would think is in this game is Mincemeat. Mincemeat is, for me, it uh, has always been a terrible experience. Another map I haven't had a good experience on ever is Macomart. But, uh, like, it's a good map. I just don't play well on it. And I just want to get better at that map. But I think it's a decent map, but it's also like one of my worst performing maps. So yeah, Mincemeat and Mac. Macomart eh. and then the Hammerhead Bridge. Really disappointed with how they ha handled the Hammerhead Bridge because I think the original layout was fine. There was a little grate that, you know, there's a platform you could walk up on top, whatever, but people could shoot through that platform and stuff. And, you know, I guess you can technically say direct, you know, direct flank, but if players were smart or, you know, they paid attention, they would see that guy up there. So they're not, they're super exposed. I don't know. The whole map layout change for this one made no sense to me. I don't think it's the worst by far. I still think Mitz Meat's probably the worst map in the game but i don't hate this like i don't hate hammerhead i'll still play it mincemeat i have i'll probably stop playing the game if i see mincemeat in the rotation that i want to play so multiplayer is great the recon mode is insane i love that little mode you can go in there and you can just recon all all the maps and all the modes you can figure out certain sight lines certain flanks it's really cool recon mode is probably like one of my favorite additions to this so far i guess some side things the locker system is great really hope to see those apartments i'm praying but you know we'll see the general store the whole battle pass system i actually don't mind i'm pretty sure we'll probably have to pay for the next battle pass but they call it a catalog and well <laughs> technically that's the battle pass the fact that you can get more than just one but those other those other ones after the first one you beat are like loot boxes a little box that you can get it's kind of like a loot box you get random stuff but you don't pay for it so that that stuff's that stuff's pretty cool the whole ability chunk system is the same way as it is and it's great ordering stuff off the app is pretty cool to do i do that i try to do that almost every day really see alert i'm really looking forward to see what they do but the multiplayer overall i think is probably the best multiplayer we've gotten in Splatoon although it can be a little sweaty at times that's that's the only flaw i have with it like major flaw but it's that's kind of a given dedicated fans are going to keep playing this because it's just the next game but overall the experience is great i think this game is pretty damn good it might be might go down as one of my favorite shooters of all time i think it's just amazing so if you are a nintendo switch fan and you haven't gotten Splatoon 3 yet and you've been considering it, I definitely recommend getting it. It's definitely worth the 60 bucks. You get like technically four game modes in the game. If that doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. They're all fun. You don't have to use motion controls if you don't want to, although I do recommend playing with them. The game feels great. I highly recommend it. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. That has been my opinion on Splatoon 3. Hopefully you can agree with me, but I can definitely say that this is one of the best Splatoon games and one of the best shooters I've ever played. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know how you feel about this game down in the comment section below. Like what rating would you give it? If I had if I had to give it a rating, I'd probably give it about an eight out of 10. I still think there's some patches needed and salmon, salmon run balances needed, but overall that's not, that doesn't really hurt the game too much for me. So eight out of 10, I think is a solid score. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know again what you think down in the comment section below and subscribe if you are brand new to the channel. I love you guys and have an absolutely fantastic day.